Um, speaking of the sign, I had that sign because George, my good friend from ThrottleNet, gave it to me. And he's here today. We had dinner the other night. Good to see you, pal. Good to see you. Thanks for having me over. And uh, he was regaling me with all this stuff about ChatGPT and the updated Chat GPT. And so I said, come on, let's, let's do the show. Let's talk about it some more. Um, it's one of those areas, like the Venn diagram is very sketchy on this for me because I'm so interested and yet I have so little understanding. Mm -hmm. Like I understand the words, but I don't understand the actual on the ground anything. You know, that makes sense? Sure, like, sure. When you're talking about code, like Rach took a couple code classes a year or two ago and just like, I don't know, it just doesn't compute my brain at all. It is hard to wrap your brain around it. This Completely. The whole thing is just so new. It's kind of like, you know, sitting in a horse and buggy going down Main Street and trying to figure out why a Model T just went by. Yeah. And, and you don't even... Or a Corvette. Or a Corvette. You, exactly. That's a great example. Yeah. You're in, you're in a horse and buggy and you're watching a Ferrari pass you. You're yeah. like, what just happened? Okay, yeah. So let's and go, that's where we're at. Let's go backwards. Um, so chat GPT. Was this invented by like a guy, a guy named Carl or like what? So no, actually, well, so it obviously, of course, Elon Musk is involved. So he was one of the original founders of OpenAI. So OpenAI.com was a not-for-profit uh, originally. Now it's going to be changing, of course, how everything does. Um, he was one of the founding uh, managers of OpenAI. And it was all about starting how uh, IT and how computers can start to make people's lives better. Everything from making traffic more efficient to just your average everyday life better. Uh, taking um, the Amazon Alexa and boosting it up a thousand points. Um, and then it kind of got taken over. Now Microsoft's heavily involved and now Microsoft is, is embedded this chat GPT into Bing. So if you start using Bing, uh, they've put in billions and billions of dollars into it. And, and really what it stands for is a generative pre-trained transformer. So what does that mean? Generative meaning that it's going to generate language a coherent text based on what humans put in. So it's not thinking by itself. That's what the, you know, it's not, this isn't self-aware uh, yet, but uh, it's pre-trained by humans to then accept a human uh, a prompt and then go out and, and answer it for you. Now, as the iterations have happened, it's happened so fast that it's doing some things that are just mind blowing and I brought some of those examples for you guys to see today, and I, we can describe them to everybody. But uh, if you get a chance to see some of these things, it is just, we're at the very beginning of probably what I think and what we talked about at dinner is bigger than the internet. Hmm. So imagine how big that is. Yeah, it's. Well, and, and you mentioned like, you know, who started this, like a, a guy named Carl. There's also a, a St. Louis connection. I don't know if most people are familiar with, but Sam. If it's Altman. Charlie Brennan, I quit. Yeah, Charlie. <laughs> Created Chat B GPT. Uh, Sam Altman. GP, a, GPT. <laughs> CBT. Damn it. He's a, a John Burroughs grad. So Sam Altman, he's like 37 years old. He's been out in Silicon Valley forever. He dropped out of Stanford, but grew up in St. Louis, went to Burroughs as part of OpenAI with Elon Musk, and I was yep. was one of the people that opened up this Pandora's box. Oh, and that's a great way of putting it, Pandora's box. It's Is amazing. it doing stuff that they didn't expect it to do? I think it's going faster than they expected it to go, but I think it's doing things. It hasn't yet even gotten to where I think they they thought it would go. Yeah. It's, we're getting there, though. But I think what's happening and what's so fascinating and why it's all the talk of humanity around the planet right now is because of the speed. Mm -hmm. I mean, version three was out in November. Six months later, we're at version four. So, and and it's a it's a hundred times more powerful than it was six months ago. Okay, I'm in typical Dave Glover fashion. I'm gonna just go all over the place. Sure. Like, I saw some of the drawings that you brought, which were uh, created by, by this AI. And my question would be this. Uh, so you say uh, whatever you said to make that picture of that woman. Yes. Okay. So you say, make me a, a picture of a beautiful woman with brown hair and green eyes, and it makes that. Yes. If someone in Yugoslavia d does the same prompt, does it make exactly the same picture? No, it will change it. And it's all because of that input of what it, what it took to describe that picture. So the picture I showed you was a 1930s influencer. So imagine if you were back in the 1930s as a Twitter or an Instagram influencer, and she has a old style camera in a mirror taking a selfie of herself. So it was more than 25,000 words to describe this picture. And it turns out it, it took a photograph, not took, it drew a photograph of a 1930s woman as an influencer with a camera of that era. And in her 
uh, modern, in that dress, the, the building in the background looks exactly the same uh, as it would in the 1930s, and it drew it, but you could not tell the difference. Now, the one thing that's interesting in that picture, you'll see it added an extra finger on her hand, yeah. so she had six fingers. That was the AI, obviously, gr- growing bigger and bigger, of course. You know course, what it and, reminds and, me of? <clears throat> this is either going to be really smart or really dumb, so brace. Um, it reminds me of dreams, because in dreams, your brain is taking stored information and creating something new and different piece by piece. Yes. And this is taking known static information and pulling out bits and creating something new piece by piece. Exactly. That's exactly what it's doing right now. Because remember, it's not thinking on its own. So it's going out and looking out at all the examples of what's out there. Um, for example, the, the Viking uh, warrior uh, woman that I have a picture of there, she is a uh, fierce. She's ready for battle. She's got the tattoo on her face. You know, but it went out and found all of these different pictures of a Viking warrior. Women uh, took pictures of the hairstyles, the, 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 the dry weave in the back of the head with the sword and then it drew that picture. But what's wild is you can't tell that a computer drew that or somebody mm-hmm. took a picture of an actress on set. Yeah. And, and that's what's really, really going to be changing things. Now, the new version actually will work with voice as well. Uh, so the really neat thing that I love about this, and we talked about some of the negatives of, you know, students not learning anymore because you don't have to write a lot of things anymore. But what's neat then is, is a lot of schools and academies are using this now to tutor because it has unlimited patience. So it can tutor math, it can tutor science and biology. That's and, interesting. And you can actually, the student can sit there and ask a, a you know, a math problem and, and it will break it down and explain it for them in more patience than a human would sitting there tutoring them. So there are some good things to it. And yes, there are a lot of negatives to it as well, uh, where yeah. you got some bad people that can do bad things with it. But My mom just texted me. She said, Dave gave me a 3D printer for Mother's Day. Can I create a man? <laughs> She sends this once a day. I don't know that Chat GPT will do that. Yeah, my mom wouldn't either. Uh, let's do this. Let's take a break, come sure. back, and Thanks. we're going to take your questions if you have any about uh, AI. No question too stupid. Trust me. 314 436 7900 895 1120 here with my buddy George from ThrottleNet and uh, more about AI after this. Happy Friday, guys. Happy St. Patrick's Day 120. DGS, my buddy George from ThrottleNet is here. If you need the guys at ThrottleNet for anything IT, go to ThrottleNet.com slash DGS. We want to ask George a question or me. It, you know, mm-hmm. six one, half dozen the other. 314-436-7900. Um, okay. I want to talk about what it does. Sure. But what I'm really interested in is what it does to us. Yes. Like in two years, five years, ten years. So, um, Let's start pretty square one. Okay. Okay. So, but let's start with, with version four. Okay. Absolutely. So, so I download it. I have some skills, which I don't real life, but pretend I do. What can I do? Okay. So right now, uh, the, the image part of it's coming out. It's going to be released to the public very soon. But imagine taking a picture of your open refrigerator. Okay. And you actually have a picture of this. Take a picture of your open refrigerator and tell me everything I can make right now. From a oh, dessert, wow. or tell me what I can make for dinner. And it will literally say, okay, well, you have these ingredients in your refrigerator. These are the four things you could make, and here's the, uh, the actual outline of how to make them all. And if you say, well, I'm missing this ingredient, it will then go out and tell you, okay, you're going to need these ingredients to make this particular yogurt parfait or whatever it may be. Um, to give you a real-world real world crazy example is a gentleman took a napkin took a pen and wrote a website, a joke website. And all it says on the top is my joke website. Click this button to generate a joke. Click this button to generate the punchline. And off of a napkin drawing, just a, it's just a napkin drawing, it wrote the styles, the colors, and the HTML all from a napkin drawing. Okay, so I don't think this is what you guys, I don't think it's your bread and butter. But for some people, it is. I come to you and I'm like, I want to start DaveGlover.com and I want to do this and this and this. And you build it, you know, and it takes a few months. Is that what that just did in it, like seconds? It did in seconds. But you still need humans to create the graphics behind it. You still have to have to make it look good. For how much and, longer? But that's the thing. It's shortened the process by a massive amount. I mean, uh, it, it passed the highest level of, inter- of job interview at Google for programming. Uh, is it perfect? No, you still have to have humans to go in and look at it and actually tweak the code a little bit and make it a little bit more precise. But uh, the fact that it can generate its own code, uh, it can help teach 
programming. You can actually tell it to do something and it'll write the code for you. Uh, look for errors um, within code you already have. You can copy and paste your own software code into it. So real world examples, though, is, is going to be when it gets integrated into your electric car. Yeah. It's integrated into your Echo. It's integrated into your microwave, your refrigerator, and it's helping you organize your entire life. Okay. So one of my rules is never ask more than one question at once. I'm going to ask three. Um, whose job has it already cost? Who's next? And who's probably safe? Well, that's a very good question. So uh, immediately the writing aspect of it is very, very test. It's, it's fascinating. The fact that you can say, I need a white paper written about XYZ topic that is no less than three pages, no more than five pages that has these particular topics to it. And within 20 seconds, it writes it. Then I'd say, okay, take that white paper and break it into five different blog posts. It'll write it in 15 seconds, all five of them, all indexed. Then I want you to take those blog posts, break them into social media posts for Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Within seconds, it's done. Then I want you to take those, break it into website content for my website within 20 seconds. It's all written, and it's all related back to that white so paper. So that used to be someone's job. Absolutely, 100%. Now, you may still use them, but you don't got to. So who's Correct. next? Who should be worried? Well, not software developers so much. They, they, what's, they're going to see an impact of it. Level one programmers are going to see an impact, meaning you're going to have to be pretty skilled as a developer to keep that multi six-figure job um, because the basic code can now be written automatically. Uh, gaming, well, when you, you can feed in now these gaming engines and it can create video games. Uh, to give you an example, a, a gentleman in 60 seconds, less than 60 seconds, recreated Pong just by talking about, describing about what, it, what Pong is. And it, and it wrote the code. It wrote the code that functions Pong in less than a minute. Okay. This, this seems, it seems like you're lying. I know. So it, it does. It's crazy. I'm the kind of person I can come up with pretty good ideas, but I have no skills at effectuating them. So if I were to come up with an idea for a video game, yeah. I could tell, tell my video game to chat GPT version 4, yep. and it would give me at least a rudimentary video game. 100%. Absolutely. Now you'd still have to create the graphics maybe behind it, you, you know, know the, this? to make it all work. This And this is all in version 4. 3.5 did not do a lot of this. It didn't deal with uh, voice. Now 4 is going to deal with voice. It's going to yeah. talk to you just like Alexa does, only with a lot more intelligence. Yes. Um, it, this is, to, to, to go back to your original question on the jobs, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting in the next five years. And I mean, that's a short amount of time sure to see how many industries are changed literally overnight because to me five years is overnight so um, at dinner we were talking about true creatives people who write novels and yes. dancers and like people who they may be safe for a while for a because while they have the unique human voice yes so it's funny you mentioned that because that was actually one thing on my notes i wanted to mention is that it can write song lyrics very easily it's going to be able to take a beat. So you sit back, you write the beat, you give it the melody, you give it the hook, put it into the system, and it will write lyrics based around topics that you give it. All rhyming, exactly matching the song. Yeah. So to be able to write songs is going to happen in less than a minute once you get that beat down. Rachel, right, so so, talk to Tom here on line one. Tom, go right ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, I got a question. So I'm a writer. I'm a uh, accomplished writer. I've written numerous books in several languages around the world. But every writer has a certain style. So I'm working on a, a novel, and I input it into uh, the software, and I, uh, I'm saying, could you rewrite this in the style of this particular author? And I get a message that says this is too much information to input. So I put in half the manuscript, same thing, one chapter, same thing. So I asked it, what, what's enough or what's, what's too much? How much can I put in? And I got this bogus answer that says, depends on the situation, circumstances. I don't have it right here in front of me, but that was the basic gist of it. So I'm wondering, how, uh, how can I do this? Is there a way to, to make this work? Yes. So my question is, um, are you doing the $20 a month subscription? This is how they're starting to generate revenue. You, if you do, you'll have access to the version four that just came out about six days ago. Um, that okay. will allow you up to 25,000 words at a time. So there's one trick around that, okay. though. Uh, if you're using version four and you put in 25,000 words, ask it, and I, I feel weird even saying ask it, ask it to tell you when it's done reading those first 20,000 words, and it will tell you, and then it will keep that in its head, so to speak, 
and you can give it the next 20,000 words and then say, let me know when you've read this and understand it. And it will then read it and it will say, okay, I've read it and understand it. Then you give it the next 20,000. So you can keep building that. Now you're allowed on version four for the $20 a month up to, I believe it's 100 imprompts per four hours. So every four hours, you can give it 100 prompts. But um, if you log in to openai.com, make sure you do the $20 subscription. At the top, click on version four, and you'll be able to slowly start putting in all of that writing. What's wild then is you can then change it into, okay, uh, I I want you to write this in the style of like, uh, you know, 1800s writing, or I want to up this to a higher level or different style of writing. And it will take your book or your paper and rewrite it in the style that you want. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's all crazy. It's too too much for it's me. It's too much. It's too much. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you.